Welcome, church, to our midweek Bible study. Let's just all stand up right now. Get ready to clap. Get ready to worship God. Amen. Lord, we just want to thank you so much that we get to gather together to worship you in the middle of the week. To just soak in your presence, oh God. To declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh Lord, we just want to worship you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So be glorified, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to worship you, God, as how we ought to. And so, Lord, we want to commit this time into your hands. Be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's just get ready to clap our hands. Amen. God has done great things and He's continuing to do great things. If you believe it, say a loud Amen. Praise you, God. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Do you believe it, church? Amen. The one our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven. Oh, hero of heaven. You conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God. You have done great. We dance, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Let's just declare it. God, you've done great things, oh God. We praise you, God. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know, and I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great. We dance, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, a shake of all, hallelujah, you have done great things, hallelujah, let's lift our hands, hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Let's sing it one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, here. Of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. We dance, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done Oh hero of heaven, oh hero of heaven. Conquer the grave, 
in free every captive and break every chain oh god you have we dance in your freedom lord we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have the great things you have the great things oh god you the great things praise you god let's give him praise this morning thank you god you've done great things oh lord in our lives and you will continue to do great things, oh God. Because you are so amazing. You are so good, oh Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, we just want to continue to lift you high this morning. Thank you, God. We surrender our lives to you, oh God. Cause I know that you're alive You came to fix my broken life And I seek to glorify your holy name Jesus Christ, let's sing it again, church. Cause I know that you're alive. You came to face my broken life. Let's just give it all to Him. And I seem to glorify your holy name. Jesus Christ, praise to God, bless your name alone. You bought my life with the blood that you shed on the cross when you died for the sins of men and you let out a cry crucified now alive in me these hands are yours oh god these hands are yours teach them to serve as you please and i'll reach out Desperate to see all the greatness of God, may my soul rest assured in you. I'll never be the same because of you, God. I'll never be the same. No, I'll never be the same. Cause I know that you're alive You came to fix my broken life And I sing to glorify your holy name Jesus, let's sing it again, oh church Cause I know that you're alive You came to fix my broken life And I sing to glorify your holy name Jesus Christ your presence fall in this place yes Lord 
worship you, Lord. The fire fall down, fire fall down on us. We pray as we seek fire fall down, fire fall down on us. We pray because I know that you're alive, you came to face my broken life, and I sing to glorify your holy name. Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. You changed it all. You changed it all. You broke down the wall when I spoke and confessed. In you I am blessed, now I walk in the light, in victorious sight of you. I'll never be the same, thank you Lord. I'll never be the same. No, I'll never be the same. Cause I know that you're alive You came to fix my broken life And I sing to glorify your holy name Jesus Christ Cause I know you're alive, you came to fix my broken life, and I sing to glorify your holy name, Jesus Christ. fixing us. Thank you for saving us. A fire fall down, fire fall down on us we pray. As we seek your fire fall down, your fire fall down on us we pray fire as we seek your fire fall down fire fall down on us we pray as we seek your fire fall down fire fall down on us we pray let's cry out to the lord as we see fire fall down fire fall down on us we pray as we see Oh, let's just ask him to stay. 
we see. Show me your heart. Show me your way. Show. Just allow the Holy Spirit to just speak into your life. To just flood your very life as we surrender more and more of ourselves to Him. More of you, O oh God, and less of us. More of you, O oh Lord, less of us. O oh Lord, we surrender ourselves to you today. Speak to us in such a great and powerful way through the word today, Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you all the glory. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. This is by our heads as we ask the Lord to bless the word. Father, we thank you for your word, which is life and light to us. We pray for more wisdom, more strength, more grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Part 14 in our series, Practical Wisdom for Purposeful Living. We are right now in chapter 17 in the book of Proverbs. And it begins with this saying, Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. A wise servant will rule over a son who causes shame and will share inheritance among the brothers. I'm going to go straight to the first point there. That strong families are built on unshakable foundations. And we're talking about firm family foundations that we want to build. Um, and all strong families are built on some kind of a value system, some kind of foundation. It doesn't just happen like many things in life. Um, in Proverbs 17, verse 6, it says, Children's children are the crown of all men, and the glory of children is their father. And so there's some kind of basis there we find that, you know, uh, you don't just have a, a great a family. You don't just produce great generation upon generation of people. Um, you build them on something, and, and it is built on uh, all the good uh, values, all the good wisdom and words that um, God has given us. In many ways, you can pick your friends, but you don't choose your family. You are born into the family. Your brother is your brother for life, and your parents are your parents, whether you, you have... Uh, you like them or not. So you don't, you don't pick your family. But if you want a strong family, you have to invest. You can, you can make it work. You can pick. You can choose what will be the outcome, although you cannot choose who your family members are. And, uh, but you have to invest in it. You have to put work into it. You have to, to develop some strong uh, values on which you want your family to grow up with so that you can build it around those things. 
So a strong marriage is the foundation of a strong family. Every strong family has some uh, beginnings, and it, it begins with uh, two uh, coming together to become that one special family. And in Proverbs 18.22, it says, He who finds a wife or he who finds a husband's husband, um, whichever way you put it, finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And um, not just finding a good wife or a good husband, but finding the one that God has uh, for you and building on that relationship. So every strong marriage has some kind of foundations that they built on. And um, so a, a church is only as strong as his marriages and his families, because the church is comprised of some total of family groups that come together. And um, so depending on whether the marriages are strong, uh, the families are strong, that, then the church uh, builds on top of that uh, pillar. And those are the foundations of the church. And faith is very important. Uh, faith contributes to strong marriages, and healthy marriages are the basis of a vibrant and robust church. After all, the church is considered the body of Christ. In that sense, it's like a family. It's an extended family. So it begins with the core family groups in the church, and then it branches out into the extended family. And much of it is built on, on the love of God, not just human love, not just filial love, not just uh, uh, other kinds of love that is fleeting, but the unconditional, unchangeable love of God, agape love. And 1 Corinthians 13 talks about that kind of love, that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love never ends. And so if you build it on, on that foundation of love, you find that it is something that will endure all things. Uh, it is not fickle. It is founded on, on fact, it is founded on unconditional love that never ends. So, um, if you want a strong family, if you want a strong church, then begin to build it on those never changing and uh, ever uh, enduring um, faithful value based on love. So, we want to discuss from this first portion of the uh, question here, to discuss the phrase, broken marriages lead to broken homes. You know, in, in what ways does that happen? And perhaps share what you see around you in society. So what part does the church play in bringing healing, bringing restoration to broken relationships and homes? I mean, if they're uh, interrelated, if, if one leads to the other, one lands to the other, then, you know, what part does the church, what part does, does each one of us have in terms of bringing healing to the other marriages and families in our church. Think about that, discuss it, and pray um, for those different needs. Um, then moving on to point B, um, even as we look at firm family foundations, as much as uh, marriages uh, that are strong would lead to a strong church and uh, strong families, uh, the, the father plays a, a large part, a big part in that family. Fathers as spiritual leaders. Um, um, not much is uh, discussed about this in our ever-changing society and uh, because of the different types of family groups that are being um, you know, pushed in our ever-progressive society. The, the church needs to re-establish what is truth. And um, if, if, especially if you want to go back to the biblical basis for strong families. So the father as a spiritual head is so important, as a spiritual leader. And scriptures tell us that, um, that the, the, the husband is the head, the priest of the home in Ephesians 5, and of course in, in the Old Testament too, and in the New. So he therefore needs to set the spiritual climate, the temperature in the, in the family. And I want to urge all, all the fathers that are out there to, take, uh, to step up not to step back, but to step up. Perhaps, you know, you've been leading or perhaps you've not been leading enough. Uh, you know, it still can change. You can still take the lead. You can still ask God to give you um, the, the wisdom and the, 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 the uh, values and the principles uh, from His Word to be able to lead in your households to establish a, a proper um, order in your home. Uh, because when there's proper divine order, then you see the blessings of God fall upon the home is not about bias, it's not about discrimination, it's just about the roles that God has placed us 
uh, in, in our homes. So God-fearing fathers need to lead with integrity. They need to lead with integrity. I mean, as a spiritual leader, that's one important fact. And, and that's something that needs to be re-established. And much of that is lost in our society, lost in, in uh, the governments, lost in politics, lost in every aspect of, of uh, life uh, in our world. And we see that when, when integrity is missing, then you find a lot of other gaps and holes begin to appear. And integrity is so important because it talks about that, that con- consistency and that ability to carry out, uh, to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And um, so while the Bible clearly affirms the equality of men and women, and we're not saying that women or children are, are, are less than the, than the fathers, we're saying that everyone is created equal in the sight of God, but the, the issue is that each one has been given a role in society. As much as uh, we are all equal, there are still managers, there are still supervisors in the workplace, there are still uh, ranks in the military where you have a general, and, and you know, everyone's equal, but our roles may differ. And so you know, for, for the family, we need to understand that, and for the fathers, uh, we need to step up again to fulfill that role. And Colossians uh, 3 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. In uh, Proverbs 20, verse 7 says, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. You know, righteousness and integrity, leadership in, in this aspect will create an umbrella of protection. You know, everything that you say, that you do, that you follow the principles that you you. Uh, set and you follow and you apply in your life will lay a great foundation, a great pathway for uh, your children, for others to follow behind. That's leadership. Leadership is leading from the front. Front is setting the example. It's telling them that this is what the Bible says and then living it out and showing them that it works. It works. And so, um, you know, godly fathers lead with integrity in that sense. It's, uh, secondly, a, a God-fearing father provides a strong spiritual covering and protection for, for the family. Um, that spiritual covering that you pro- pro- provide because you follow uh, carefully uh, what God has placed before us. Because God knows the uh, pitfalls and, 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 and the areas that, uh, you know, if we don't follow, we will fail and we will fall in those areas. So as leaders, uh, you know, as fathers, uh, of each household, we need to live our lives in such a way that we literally blaze a path, a secure path, and provide not just a shelter over their head, but a spiritual covering and protection. Proverbs 14, verse 26 says, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. His children will have a place of refuge. And um, the home is meant to be a safe, secure place. Uh, the family home is meant to be a place where children can grow up as children and everyone can function securely and fulfill their roles in, in such a way where they are secure and, and they are able to do it confidently. And the head of the household provides that, that climate, that atmosphere, that spirit, you know, in a loving, uh, tender, caring fashion. Like the way that Father God provides for us the protection. It's, it's, it's the role of the father. And point three, a loving husband is the best father and role model for the children. I mean, you cannot be a great father if you're not a loving husband. You know, it, it's not one or the other. And I, I've seen, even as I minister to people, that some are great fathers, but, you know, uh, so-so husbands. And there are some that are great husbands, but they don't want to be a, a great father. And it, 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 it's not one or the other. It goes together. So it begins with being a loving husband. And, and again, going back to the basis of love um, in, in the family of God in, in, as the foundation of uh, strength in a home. So a loving husband is the best father and role model for children. If you love your wife the way that Christ loves the church and you're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to, to do everything for your wife, then uh, from there it sets you know, the uh, tone for the rest of the family and for your children. Headship, the home requires unconditional sacrificial love. Of course, Ephesians 5.25 confirms that for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. I mean, that's that's the standard that Christ set for us as the head of the church. And so a family is also blessed when a man learns to graciously love his wife and children. And it 
extends from there, outside the home. Moving to point C, uh, which is uh, mothers and wives. Um, mothers love and serve with consistency. Of course, you know, when we ever come across uh, Proverbs 31, verse 28, um, it tells us about how the children will rise up and call. The mother blessed her husband also. He praises her. I mean, it's a tough uh, act to follow if you want to look at Proverbs 31, but it is talking about principles. It's not just talking about that, that you know, if, if you're not that, this person, if you're not doing all those things, then you are not um, the kind of mother or wife that you're meant to be. But it's the principle of, of that, uh, that's taught in, in Proverbs 31. Uh, it's talking about two roles for the woman, but one person. There are two roles, again, being the mother and, and being the wife. And, and it's a tough uh, uh, part. You know, the tough part is trying to balance the two roles, especially in, in, in this modern and tough economic reality where in most uh, homes, both parents have to go out to work just to be able to provide a shelter over their head and food on the table and proper education and, you know, for the children. And so, uh, you know, husbands need to, uh, again, understand that though their role may be the head of the house, the leader, the spiritual leader, that, you know, again, you know, it is this aspect of loving and caring and providing the best for the wife, for the family, and likewise the, the, the wife. So their roles were, would, would uh, uh, although they are defined as, you know, submission, as leadership, but in terms of providing for the care and for the family, you know, they need to be uh, considerate and they need to just be able to, to be flexible in how they uh, fill in for one another in those aspects. So when we talk about the mothers, that they, first they need to be the loving wife. Um, the family is blessed when the wife is a woman of prayer, caring, and a woman of character, one who is always available, willing to sacrifice. And uh, of course, you know, again, all the, all the qualities are there in Proverbs 31. You can go read it and discuss some of the challenges of uh, Proverbs 31. And the greatest calling of the wife is to be a partner and co-laborer in the home, in the family, to the husband, to be the best partner, to be the best co-laborer. You know, you are uh, called to be one. You know, when you, when you say, I do, you're no longer just, you know, an, uh, a, a minor partner. You are a co-laborer. You, you are part of that with the equal uh, rights, the equal uh, responsibility, and more than anything else, the equal calling of God upon your lives. So, a uh, loving wife is the first uh, role, of course, then the caring mother. Um, again, a reminder to us that children are a gift from the Lord. And as a caring mother, um, you know, often there are periods where you are test, tested and you are stretched to a degree where you feel like they're more a burden than a blessing. And, and it's a good reminder to us that uh, children are a blessing, not just when they behave well. They are a blessing to parents too because they stretch us. They, they grow us. They help us come to a place in our life where we realize that we cannot afford to be children anymore. We are adults and we have to grow into that role. And so in that sense, you know, when I look at it from that point of view, I see that it's such a great blessing because I had children very early. Um, you know, we got married. Within a year, we had children, and, and um, it helped me grow more than anything else because all of a sudden, I, I, I couldn't just look after myself and my wife. I couldn't just think about my own need. I have to consider them. And uh, no longer can you be selfish. You have to be selfless. Everything you have to think about, you know, the others. And that helps, you to pre that helps to prepare you for the ministry, to help to prepare you to be a greater contributor and giver to the community around you, to the church, to, you, to your friends, to the people that need that out there. And it begins there. So in that sense, I see it as a great blessing. So we move to the discussion question. Discuss some of the wrong trends that contribute to broken marriages. What are some of the trends that um, are actually stressing uh, marriages and families, and the confused roles in the home that has created that problem. So suggest three habits that you can develop that perhaps can strengthen your marriage or other people's marriage. Three habits that are great in the Bible that we can follow. And then finally, children. Children are a blessing, and children 
when they're young, when they're not an adult yet, the Bible teaches us to submit to their parents. Uh, again, children are meant to be a blessing and not a burden. And so I would challenge all parents to begin training them when they're young, uh, teaching them what it means to submit, teaching them God's method of protection and the way things work in real life, especially when it comes to this aspect of uh, learning to submit to authorities. So in Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It says a heritage. I mean, that's your heritage. That's, that's your legacy, you know. So you determine what your legacy is through your children by how you raise them, um, your attitude towards um, raising your children, loving them. Uh, children brought up in the fear of the Lord will be blessed by the Lord, and they will be a blessing to their families in return. I mean, there's different philosophies in our world. I find that there's a distinct difference between the Western and Eastern philosophy. In the Eastern philosophy, a lot of people raise their kids and their, their, their mindset and philosophy is this, that when I'm old, you know, if I, if I invest in them, then when I'm old, my children will take care of me. Whereas in the Western philosophy, they're like, you know, 18, you're out, you know, I put enough, you're on your own. And uh, there's no thought of, yeah, my children have to come back and, and take care of me. I mean, you know, there are different ways of looking at it. But in, in, in many ways, when we look at the biblical principle, the, the issue is learning to come to this place where we put our best into our children, we invest in them. And whether or not they can come back later in our lives to, to take care of us financially or in our old age, that's, that's a different matter. The, the, the key is that they will become a blessing in the society around them. Um, so in, in Psalm 127 verse 4 It says like arrows in the hand of a warrior So are the ch children of one's youth Like arrows in the hand of a warrior I mean again you know Arrows are only uh, implements and tools of a warrior It depends on how you wield it It depends how you prepare it It depends on how and, and, and what application you put it in your life So it involves training It involves all these different aspects of preparation and likewise, for your children, the amount of time you put into it, the amount of love you invest, the amount of, you know, um, your sacrifices that you make will uh, see the returns. You know, what you sow, you shall reap. Likewise, in your children. So, um, you know, if you, if you set the right example, bless them, love them, lead them, uh, they will be a blessing all the days of your life. And then two, of course, training is the foundation for excellence. Um, I, I love this word training, you know. Uh, training uh, is, is one of the most important things in life. Uh, discipleship, you want to put it, uh, you know, in that way. Um, and if we can apply it to our children too. Um, the lesson from Deuteronomy 6, if you look at the, the commandment from God in, in Deuteronomy 6, is that God intended spiritual training to be part of the daily routine of family life. Whilst it is great that our children go to a good uh, Sunday school, a children's ministry program on a Sunday, it is after all at most one or two hours of their life. And it's greater if you can put them in a Christian school too, because then they get a daily dose of that. But more than anything else, the Bible's prescription for training children in righteousness is found in Deuteronomy 6. And in, in verse 5 it says, You must love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. It begins with you. Loving God, leading them, setting the example. But then, more than that, in, in verse 6, it says, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these things that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, on the road, on going to bed, when they're getting up. Tie them to your hands, wear them on your forehead, write them on the doorpost. Basically, you know, when he talks about training children, it is a full-time job. You know, it is, it is every moment every waking moment, it is every day, uh, you know, it is in every way. Whether you're eating, whether you're working, whether you're playing, you are training them. So watch what you say, you know, teach them not just what uh, you, you, you want them to know, but set the example for them. And Proverbs 22, 6 says, train a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not turn from it. Consistency. 
You know, that's what it's all about. Teaching children respect for law and order starts early and how parents teach and interact at home again. You know, all these things, all these valuable lessons of life start even during the formative years of their life and it carries on throughout life. Um, and of course, you know, the command for children in Ephesians 6 1 is to obey your parents in the, in the Lord, for this is right. Um, and we want to close with this discussion. What are the greatest needs of your children during their formative years? Formative years meaning from birth through age 8, at least defined by UNICEF. From, eight, from birth to age 8, you know, those are the years that are so important. So what are the greatest needs of the children? What are the things that you want to be able to put into them other than just good food? You know, and, uh, you know what are some of the spiritual and uh, important things that you, you need to instill in them and invest in them. Um, and all parents have uh, aspirations for their children. You know, every parent has aspirations for their children, they, though they may differ. So list your top three aspirations that you have for your children. You know, what are the top three things that you want them to have? You know, you know, some will say, well, I want them to be a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. I want them to be a movie star. I want them to be good looking. You know, what are the top three aspirations? And then ask yourself, do they line up with scripture? And how do you want to go about doing that? So this is just some of the things that, you know, we, we uh, discussed today that are found in the book of Proverbs in verse uh, chapter 17. And you can discuss, you can go further, and I encourage you to read more. Um, in the Bible and books and do all you can to build that firm family foundation. The Lord bless you and may he continue to protect you and guide your families during this season. Amen.